Hey what's up guys, welcome to a complete Dendro Traveler Guide. In today's video we're going to be covering the newest element that you can get for your Traveler, your main character, which is obviously Dendro. The reason why we have to talk about them in this video is because the new Dendro Traveler is honestly really good and someone who you should absolutely be using. Because of that, what I'm going to do through this video is cover everything you need to know about this character, first of all talk about why they're good and how they're useful, and then cover their best artifacts, weapons, teams, constellations, and also include a showcase at the end that you can really get a good grasp on this character's kit and how to use them efficiently. Before we begin, Again, I do want you guys to know that I do stream most nights on Twitch, link in the description if you're interested, and without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do in this video is talk about the main character's talents and just abilities, explain what they do and how they work, and then go into more detail on why this main character is actually so good, and why I believe you should use them as a powerful Dendro support. First things first, your elemental skill is a pretty straightforward ability that will just deal a small amount of damage and apply Dendro onto enemies. The cooldown is only 8 seconds, so it's something that you're going to want to spam whenever you swap into this character. The most important part of your kit though is going to be your elemental burst. Your elemental burst is this sort of dendro lamp that you place on the field that deals AoE damage to opponents and will apply dendro consistently. Your burst is going to apply dendro a total of 5 times and then you will apply it 1 extra time when you have your second constellation which is going to be the best part of your kit as applying dendro to enemies is very important for dendro reaction team comps which we'll talk about later that are very powerful in the current meta. On top of just that, this lotus lamp will not only deal good damage through its honestly pretty decent scaling but also has another property where it will infuse with either hydro, electro and pyro and then have a unique effect. In fact, if it comes into contact with Hydro, the AoE of the lamp and its attacks are going to be increased, which makes it more convenient against large mobs of enemies, or against enemies that might be like far away from it, to actually be able to apply that Dendro on them consistently, as well as deal damage. If it comes into contact with Electro, the attack speed of the lamp will be increased, which gives you more DPS overall. And lastly, if it comes into contact with Pyro, then the lamp will explode, deal a pretty decent chunk of damage, but since it exploded, it'll stop, you know, existing, stop applying Dendro to enemies, so typically, you would want to avoid getting it in contact with Pyro. Because of that, Hydro and Electro are going to be your two favorite ones. As I said, Electro will be more DPS, but Hydro is like more consistent because the AoE is bigger, so I personally really like it. Although many teams will run both Hydro and Electro characters, so whichever one you get, you'll be happy with. With that said, something to keep in mind is that this burst can obviously only be infused once, right? Whichever element it comes into contact with first is what it's going to be infused with. Because of that, you really want to be aware of your rotation in what order you're using abilities, and you also want to be careful against certain enemies. The reason for that is because enemies with like Pyro infused attacks, for example, could hit your lamp and then the lamp will come into contact with it and explode which is not really what you want. With that said though this ability is pretty straightforward. You typically want to as I said use Hydro or Electro on it and it's something that does good damage and it has a pretty good duration of 12 seconds without constellations and 15 seconds once you unlock your second one which you can get for free which makes it even better. The energy cost is 80 though so that is definitely something you're going to keep in mind as the Dendro Traveler is someone who needs a lot of energy recharge. Moving on for your passive talents your first one is actually going to be quite nice as a passive element Elemental Mastery buff to your active character. In fact, every second your burst is out, your active character will gain 6 Elemental Mastery with a maximum of 10 stacks, so a total of a 60 Elemental Mastery increase. This isn't the biggest deal, but it is a quite nice increase of EM, which will increase your reaction damage. Lastly, your second passive will give the Traveler an additional scaling based on the Elemental Mastery that they have for both their Elemental Skill and their Elemental Burst. This is going to be nice in certain teams, in certain reaction teams, where the Dendro main character is going to proc reactions themselves, so you're going to build EM on them, although this is very team dependent dependent, as many teams you'll just stack energy recharge or won't focus too much on your elemental mastery. Because of that, this passive talent will either increase or decrease in value, as I said, based on the team you're running, but it's something you need to keep in mind when building this character and can be an okay passive increase to your damage. And lastly, you should know that your burst is going to be the main part of your kit, so if you are leveling your talents all the way for your damage, you do want to make sure you maximize your burst as your number one priority and then your skill afterwards. With that said, let's now talk about why the Traveler is so good and why I believe they're going to be the go-to Dendro option for most players and someone who you should definitely be using. Well, first of all, Dendro itself is an element that has very powerful reactions. As I'm sure you guys have seen by now, and as I will explain even in future videos as well, Dendro reactions like Quicken and Bloom and their sub reactions are incredibly powerful and have very powerful teams that can be built around them. Being able to Quicken and aggravate an official team, for example, where your official is going to be dealing massive amounts of damage through this new additive Dendro reaction that will buff your electro damage is a very powerful team. Even characters like Kaching, who were previously seen as not not very meta at all, has a very strong aggravate team now, where she shines exceptionally because of this new Dendro reaction that the Traveler can enable. And so not only is Dendro good, but the Traveler themselves also has a lot of benefits and reasons why you would want to run them. Well, first of all, they are your go-to free-to-play Dendro option, as obviously everyone has the Traveler, and everyone can also get their very powerful constellations for free, which is another upside. On top of that, compared to the other Dendro options we have right now, while Tsikhnari is good, he is more of an on-field character, and Kolei is unfortunately not, at least as of right now, 
now going to be better than the main character as MC in general will just apply more consistent dendro from off field as well as deal more damage. This is mainly going to be because of your elemental burst that lasts for a very long time, 15 seconds with your second constellation, constantly hitting enemies and applying dendro. Your damage is going to be decent, which is something to consider, and you also have very good utility in the form of a supportive weapon and artifact set that can buff your team and provide you with resources like energy with a Favonia sword, but I will go into more detail on that in the build section of this video, which is coming up right after this. Another important factor to keep in mind is that the main character is someone who gets a lot of value even with low investment. Now, while yes, their damage scales with your like talent level for your burst, and you do want to level them for reactions, so you can get your traveler all the way up to 90 if you're proccing reactions on them. Even if you are lower investment and you don't level your talents, while your personal damage will be lower, you will still be applying the same amount of dendro. Because of that, you can still enable the teams that make this character so good, and so you can still get a lot of value even without fully investing into them. For all those reasons, I believe the MC is a very powerful dendro character, at least for right now, that you should be using. Alright, now moving on, let's talk about what builds you actually want on this character. Starting things off, for the artifact sets you're looking for, there are going to be a few good options that will help increase your overall team's damage. The first one, and the most obvious one, is going to be the four piece of the Deepwood memory set. What this set does is not only increase your dendro damage bonus by 15%, but especially once you have the four piece, it will decrease the dendro resistance of opponents by 30% for eight seconds once your skill or your burst hits set opponents. This is very relevant because it works even from off field, so your elemental burst on the traveler will constantly be applying the set effect and decreasing the dendro resistance of enemies. This is something that is going to increase all your dendro damage, even some reaction damage that does factor in the resistance of opponents, so it's definitely something to keep in mind and a worthwhile set to consider. I believe it is going to be the go-to set for teams that want to maximize their dendro damage, so it is what I recommend for a lot of players. With that said, personally I don't have a good set of this, which is why I'm showing it here, but also some teams can use other sets depending on what you're going for and also what you have farmed. A good example of this is another set, the Noblesse Oblige set, which is a very powerful supportive artifact set that you do want in most team comps. This set will increase your burst damage by 20% as well as give you an attack buff to all your party members when you do use your burst. Now while I would recommend using the set on someone like a healer that you might have in your team, if no one else can use it, it can definitely be a good option for your traveler as you can have a pretty decent uptime on this if you're spamming your burst on cooldown. With that said, if you want to maximize your traveler's personal damage, there's two sets that you can go for depending on a few things, uh, either the four piece emblem or the four piece of the new Gilded Dream set. Both of these sets can work to buffing your personal damage, emblem being if you stack a lot of energy recharge, which you typically need, the two piece set giving you 20% energy recharge and the four piece increasing your burst damage by 25% of that energy recharge is going to make it to where your burst is going to deal as much damage as possible. Similarly, if your Dendro MC is proccing reactions in Quicken or Bloom teams and you're trying to maximize your personal damage on MC, the Gilded Dreams can also be a really good set as you'll get a ton of elemental mastery in both the two and the four piece. Because of that, Gilded Dreams and Emblem are going to be the go-tos for maximizing your personal damage, whereas Deepwood Memories and the Noblesse Oblige set are going to be the more standard supportive artifact sets. With that said, I also wanted to mention the four piece instructor as it's a good option, but it's only a four star set. So it can be difficult to not only have, but have with good stats on and make sure you have enough energy recharge with this set, but it can be a viable option. So I did want to mention it. Overall though, as I said, I personally prefer running Dendro MC in a more supportive style, but all the artifact sets that I mentioned are good options with Deepwood being my personal favorite and the sort of standard. Moving on for the artifact stats you want on the Dendro main traveler. While there are a lot of good options, here's typically going to be your best bet. First of all, for your sands, energy recharge is going to be the go-to as you need a lot to be able to spam your burst on cooldown, which is by far the most important part of your kit and why you are running this character. Because of that, I highly recommend energy recharge on your sands and also a supportive weapon like the Favonius sword, which we'll talk about later, can help alleviate this issue. For the exact amount of energy recharge you need though, this highly depends on your team and rotation, so it's hard for me to give you an exact number. With that said, I would say to go for anywhere from 200 to 240, but certain teams can get away with less and certain teams might want more. With that said, you're typically going to want 200 or more ER, as I said, 200 to 240 as a general range. For your other pieces, you want a dendro damage bonus goblet, as this is very important for the traveler. And for your circlet, you want to go for a crit one, either crit damage or crit rate, whichever you need more of. Although do keep in mind that if you're running a Favonius weapon, then crit rate will be very important to have. With that said, I also wanted to mention that there's potentially going to be teams in the future that, for example, solely rely on Bloom or where the Traveler is going to be proccing a ton of reactions. While there isn't really a good team comp like that right now, with future Dendro characters, this is possible. And in a team comp like that, there could be a case for running full Elemental Mastery on the Traveler. So I did want to mention that in this video, as EM will be the most for your personal reaction damage, but it isn't recommended as of right now. For your substats in general, you can look for everything that I mentioned. So Energy Recharge, Crit, Elemental Mastery, and Attack Percent. Lastly, if you don't have a Dendro Goblet, as it is hard to farm for, you can use Elemental Mastery or Attack Percent for now, but I highly recommend trying to get this new goblet. Now moving on for the weapons you want on the main character, it's actually going to be very straightforward. 
straightforward. For most people, I highly recommend going for the Fafonia Sword as the general option because it'll give you a ton of uh, energy recharge, over 60% at level 90, as well as just having a really good effect that will generate you white particles for your entire team, like energy for your entire team. When you crit, there's a chance that goes up with the refinement. This effect is absolutely insane, one of the strongest supportive weapon lines in the game, an amazingly powerful supportive weapon line that is good on so many different characters, and the Traveler is no exception. This is mainly because you really need energy recharge on this character, and so being able to run a Favonia Sword is typically going to be your like main option for most players. With that said, there can be situations where other weapons are better. For example, if you have the Freedom Sworn, this can be a really good weapon for your overall team's damage, and even more so if your main character is proccing reactions as you get Elemental Mastery on the main stat, but it's mainly for the effect that you're using this as you gain 10% damage and then also will buff your team's normal charge and plunge attack damage by 16% and also their attack by 20%, and this is for every single party member you have, so it is really good. This happens when you trigger reactions on your main character, which is something that you can pretty easily do, as the effect does even trigger when you're off field. This is therefore the go-to 5-star to use if you have it for just damage to your team, but if you need energy on your main character or even for other party members, then a supportive weapon like Favonius Lance is going to be your go-to in general, and also especially because it's just more accessible. Now with that said, if you don't have a Favonius, or if you don't need the energy recharge, like let's say you're building the main character for damage, or you already have enough energy recharge, in that case there are other options. First of all, in the case that you don't have Favonius Sword, the new free-to-play weapon, the Sapwood Blade, which you can craft at a blacksmith, is a really good option because it gives you just a good amount of stats, a high base attack with some energy recharge, and then a passive that will give elemental mastery to you to whichever character picks up a leaf that it generates once you proc a dendro reaction. This is obviously a weapon that gets better with refinement and that you can refine for free with prototypes at the blacksmith, is going to be the go-to free-to-play option for the Traveler. With that said, if you want a more offensive option, if you really just just want to maximize your traveler's damage because I know there's some people who really just main the traveler and like to auto attack with them and stuff. While it isn't optimal, and I do recommend a supportive playstyle, you can go for either a five star weapon like Jade Cutter, Mist Flitter, or any five star sword you may have. But there's also some other good offensive weapons like Iron Sting if you're proccing reactions, or the Harbinger of Dawn as a support who can keep their HP above 90. You'll just get a ton of crit rate from this effect and a pretty good amount of crit damage. So, yes, this can be difficult to use if you're on field, but if you do want to maximize your damage, the Harbinger is a good option. Generally speaking, though, as I said, I really like Freedom Sworn. If you have it and Favonius Sword as the general go-to option. For the main character's constellations, these are actually pretty good. Some of them are very important to get, especially because, as I said, they're very accessible and something you can get for free. First of all, your first constellation is going to give you more energy, which as I mentioned in the last section, it will alleviate the energy recharge amounts that you need, as you gain 3.5 energy when your elemental skill hits an opponent. Your second constellation is going to be one of your best to see really nice one, as it increases the duration of your elemental burst by 3 seconds, giving you more uptime and extra proc of Dendro, which is going to be very nice for reactions and damage. Your C3 and 5, as always, increase your talent levels, which are nice. Your fourth constellation procs five stacks of your elemental mastery buffing passive instantly when you use your burst, which means that your active character will start with a bonus of 30 elemental mastery instantly as you get five stacks of 6 EM. Lastly, your sixth constellation is also very good as you gain a 12% dendro damage bonus to your active character when your burst is active. You will get this dendro damage bonus on whichever character is under your overflowing lotus light passive, and you will also get a 12% damage bonus to whichever element you infused inside of your burst, which can be nice especially for Electro or Hydro. Alright, now moving on, let's talk about the teams that you can make with the Dendro main Traveler. Now, do keep in mind, this section is going to be covering a lot of different Dendro reactions, covering these sort of Dendro teams that you can make as a whole, because the Traveler is going to be a very good but very generic Dendro support that can fill in the role in almost any Dendro reaction team. So I'm going to cover the team archetypes very briefly and give you guys more of like a team format that you can follow, the elements that you want to mix with one another, and then talk about like example teams and characters that you can pair with one another. So with that said, let's get into it. First of all, for quick and teams, where you're going to be pairing Dendro with Electro, a good example team can look something like this, but again, there's a lot of options. You're going to be running Dendro main character with at least one Electro character, but typically running two is really good, like Fischl Beto or Fischl Yai, or a few other options with Fischl being generally like the go-to Electro character because of her fourth ascension passive and other reasons that I've explained so many times by now, but basically she's just broken. Electro characters in general work very well here. I've seen a lot of different Electro teams actually work quite well, and ka with the new quick and reactions like Aggravate ka is a very powerful team that I'll make a separate video on. I think I'm going to make an updated ka guide, but basically she actually got buffed now, and so did many other Electro characters that can work very well in this team. I will say if you need a healer, uh, you can either run Jean as your Enemo option or Kuki as your Electro option, but you can also just run a more offensive team for like the Abyss if you don't need one. With that said, while I really like running an Enemo character to buff my Electro damage significantly, I have seen some people run Double Dendro and it can work, but personally I really do like running an Enemo character. Next up for the variations of Bloom teams that you can run, where you're running a Hydro character with Dendro, there are a few variations 
variations of this team that I'm going to talk about, mainly two like archetypes. But first of all, if you're running something like Fischl, Sinkju, and the Traveler with Sucrose, you actually get like the new variation of what was before a Taser team, but is now a Hyper Bloom team, which I know some theory crafters call Salad. I don't know what the exact team name is going to be, but basically this team where you have Sucrose on field auto attacking, swirling with all her autos. And since you're building high elemental mastery on her, if she procs reactions with her swirls, they'll do a lot of good damage. And she'll also buff your team with elemental mastery thanks to her very powerful passive talents that I'm sure you know about by now. On top of that, what's really nice with Sucrose is you get the Verdescent Venator set, buffing your team's reaction damage very significantly by decreasing the elemental resistance of opponents to both Hydro and Electro, which is very relevant in this team as both Fischl and Sing Chu are incredibly powerful units. On top of that, the Dendro MC here is very important because you can infuse your burst with Hydro or Electro and constantly apply Dendro on enemies, allowing you to proc that Hyper Bloom reaction. And just to point out, in this team, the reason I'm running Sucrose over Kazua is because Sucrose will swirl on all her auto attacks and be a on-field driver, someone you can actually auto attack with, whereas Kazua you can't really because his auto attacks don't swirl. Keep in mind in a team like this, you don't have a healer, but Sing Chu's defensive utility, like the damage reduction and the healing from his rain swords, should be enough to keep you healthy, especially in short content like the Abyss. Now, with that said, if you want to run other variations of a Hyper Bloom team, you can. Like, there's this one that I've actually been trying out uh, with Ayato, Sing Chu, and actually right in to get your burst back and do good electro damage, popping all the blooms that you'll have set up once you use your Hydro with your Dendro, swap into your electro character and pop all those blooms for some good damage, right in can actually work. With that said, there's variations here, and you can actually run a healer if you need to, but this team is very user friendly, very easy to play. And once again, this Hyper Bloom is more of like a team format that is pretty flexible. For another Bloom reaction, which is Burgeon, in this team, you're going to be running Hydro with Dendro, but this time you need a Pyro character to pop those blooms. In this case, it's going to be Toma as your off field Pyro applier. The last slot is pretty flexible, but in my experience, Fischl actually worked here, and your Toma would still be proccing that Burgeon, that nice AoE reaction, with Fischl obviously dealing a lot of good off field damage as well, but the last slot is flexible. Your Hydro option is going to be flexible too, but typically when you see Kokomi in a team, it's because she can fit one of two roles either an off field slow Hydro applier who will also heal you and buff your team, or an on field healer and Hydro applier, but pretty fast this time since she's on field and her autos apply Hydro, which is the case in this team. With that said though, this is just an example of a Burgeon team. There's many others where you can fit the Dendro main character. Lastly, regarding Quick Bloom, which is a Hyper Bloom team where you're proccing Quicken and Hyper Bloom at the same time, this is a team where I prefer running Tihlani over uh, the Dendro MC. And the reason why is because with Dendro main character in this team, your damage isn't going to be that high. Because what you're doing in this team is you're sacrificing running fast Hydro application like St. Chu to run a slow one to keep the Quicken aura on enemies. For more information on that, I'll link a reaction guide in the description down below, but basically this team's damage comes almost entirely from Fischl, whereas if you run it with Tihnadi, you at least have a pretty powerful Dendro DPS that can help you out. With that said though, uh, these are all team archetypes that work. If there's anything new I want to add, since Dendro reactions in general are very new, it will be in a pinned comment, so be sure to look for that. With that said, this is my personal favorite team. I really love this new Hyper Bloom team that I find very good, so this is what I'm going to be running for the showcase. Now with that said, regarding the showcase, uh, I'm running what I can on my main character, because for example, while I do want to run the new Dendro set, uh, I've been farming it since it came out and I don't have a good set yet so I'm using Noblesse Oblige which is pretty good and I'm running Freedom Sworn which is very good as well although I am partially using it because my Fab Sword isn't fully leveled yet but that is something I'm going to do later this week. And lastly while my main character is only level 80 I would recommend getting them to 90 to maximize your reaction damage I just don't have any XP books and already recorded a very good showcase. With that said I hope you enjoyed the guide and I hope you'll enjoy the showcase. Let's go.
And so yeah, that's about it. For all those reasons, I believe you should definitely be using your main character on the Dendro element as they are just a really good go-to Dendro support for now, at least until we get new ones, but just in general, very powerful for reaction-based teams. I really like this character. Hope you enjoyed this guide. I'm sorry for the delay on it. I know my videos have been a bit behind because of editing, but I have a ton ready to come out for Sumeru, Sumeru teams, best characters and stuff in this new patch. So do stay tuned for all that and feel free to subscribe if you're new. With that said, I hope this guide was helpful. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.